Hello students, this is Ms. Dalton, and this is the third video in our factoring series on factoring patterns. Factoring patterns are just um, types of trinomials where they have a special pattern. And if you recognize that special pattern, then we can factor them a little bit quickly. The first factoring pattern is when you have a binomial. Binomial means two terms, and this is what we call a difference of squares. And the reason why it is called a difference of squares is because it is two perfect squares that are being subtracted. When you see that, and when I'm talking about perfect squares, I'm talking about something that you can take the square root of. Some perfect squares are we have one, a perfect square four, nine, 16, 25, and so on. These are perfect squares because they, they can be written as something squared. In other words, one can be written as one squared, four can be written as two squared, nine can be written as three squared, and so on. Okay, so when you see that, how it factors is you take um, whatever is squared, so take whatever is being squared here and whatever is being squared here, and you write it in parentheses, A with a plus B, and then also A minus B. Here's an example. We have X squared minus 25. Well, this can be written as an X being squared minus five being squared. And so this is our A and this is our B. And so when we factor that, we're gonna have X plus five, and then we're gonna have X minus five. Now let me show you that this does in fact um, work. If you were to multiply this back together, you'd have X times X, which is X squared then you'd have x times a negative five, which is minus five x, and then you'd have five times x, which is plus five x, and then five times a negative five, which is negative 25. So putting that plus and minus in the middle there makes these cancel, and so we do have that x squared minus 25. So I just want you to realize that it does in fact factor to be that, and so this would be your factors. Okay, another factoring pattern is when you have what's called a perfect square trinomial. Now, when you have a perfect square trinomial, something that you're gonna recognize is that the first term is gonna be something squared, and that last term is also going to be a perfect square, and the middle term is when you take that a times b and double it okay you'll see that in the middle and so when that happens if you have a plus in the middle then your factors are going to be a plus b times a plus b but we can write that as a plus b quantity squared <clears throat> if you have a minus in the middle then it would be an a minus b quantity squared So here's an example of a perfect square trinomial. Now, sometimes you don't recognize that it's a perfect square trinomial, and that's fine. If you don't recognize that it is one, that's, you can still use the grouping method. Um, this is just, if you do recognize that it is this perfect square trinomial, then it's gonna allow you to factor a little bit faster. So some kind of a red flag that it might be a perfect square trinomial is when these the first term and the last term are perfect squares. So this can be written as x quantity squared. This can be written as nine squared. Now to double check that it is a perfect square trinomial, we would have to take our a times our b, which would be nine x, and we'd wanna double it and if it equals that middle term, then it is a perfect square trinomial. So this would factor to be this a value right here, which is x plus, notice I'm using a plus because the middle term is plus, 
and then it is quantity squared. Now again, if you don't trust me, let's, let me show you that this does in fact equal that. If I have x plus 9 quantity squared, that's the same thing as x plus 9 times x plus 9. So let's multiply that. x times x, x squared, x times 9 is 9x, 9x, and then 81. So notice, because the middle terms, you're getting the same thing, that's why it's double that. So x squared plus 18x plus 81. So you can see that it does in fact work. This would be your answer. All right, last one. Um, let's check to see if this is a perfect square trinomial. Now first, you would wanna look in for a GCF. I haven't mentioned that, but you should always look for a GCF. There's nothing that can go into four, 20, and 25, so this is, does not have a GCF. But let's check and see if it is a perfect square trinomial. Can I write the first term as something squared? Yes, two x quantity squared. Can I write the last term as something squared? Yes, five squared. Now, can I multiply these together? So two x times five and double it, and does that equal this? Well, two x times five would be 10 x, and 10 x times two is 20 x, so yes, it does check. Therefore, this is a perfect square trinomial, so we can quickly factor it, put the 2x and the 5, and the sign that goes in the middle is this sign right here. So it's going to be a minus 5, and it's just quantity squared. All right, so hopefully you understand these patterns a little bit and come to class ready to work.